Hello, this is Britt Caswell with another example video. Uh, this is example 3 in section 1-7 in the Savas Realize Algebra 1 textbook. In this example we are looking at absolute value inequalities. So how to graph an inequality when we have an absolute value in it. Now recall from our last video that when you have an absolute value and it's already isolated, like you see here, what we can do is we can split the inequality into two. The first one I write out as the same kind of symbol of, and everything, but without the little uh, absolute value bars. And then on the second one, I write it out and I change the sign on, on one side of it. Now when I go to change that sign, I need to remember to flip my inequality symbol. So what this has done is this has created two inequalities. Let's look at them on a graph. So the first inequality says that x is less than 3, so I would be shading that way from here. The second inequality says that x is greater than negative 3. So I would start here on negative 3 and I'd shade it to the right. So what we get is we get this kind of graph right here. This kind of q-tip shaped graph. This is an and compound inequality. So I could write this out as negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. Okay. Or if it asks you to write it in interval notation, you would write it as negative 3 comma 3. And then because the, the circles are hollow, you're going to use a curved bracket. Now if this said that it could be equal to, and it had the filled in circles, you would use the square brackets like these. You'll see another video that I have on interval notation. Let's check another one. So with this one, I'm going to split it into two inequalities. One where I just drop the bars. The other where I change to a negative 3. And remember, we change the inequality symbol Okay, for the, for the negative one only. So if I were to graph this, x is greater than 3 would get shaded to the right like this and x is less than negative 3 will get shaded to the left like this. So do you see how the graph changed based off of the direction of the inequality symbol? Now this one is an OR inequality symbol. So if the alligator is eating the absolute value, you'll get an OR. And if the alligator is facing away from the absolute value, you get an AND. Now for this one, right, I could just write an OR in between here, and that is the correct answer. But if I need to write it in interval notation, this is how you would write it. You'd say from negative infinity, comma, negative 3. And then we'd create another one from 3, comma, to positive infinity. And in this case, when you have them facing out like this, using an OR situation, we're going to use the union. Okay? So that's it in interval notation if you need it. Again, I'll put an interval notation video as well. I'm trying to avoid those in this textbook though. Alright, so now number three gives us another one and it asks us to graph it this time. So again, the absolute value is alone. So I split it into two expressions the first one without the bars. The second one, I change the sign and then I flip the inequality backwards. So now notice the alligator was originally facing the absolute value. So this is going to be an OR situation that graphs with the arrows pointing out. So x is greater than 15 
I'm going to put my circle on 15. It's open because it can't be equal to. And everything greater than 15 goes to the right. X is less than negative 15. I'm going to put it at negative 15 with an open circle because it's not equal. And it shades to the left. So there's the graph. And my answer is an OR answer, so I'm going to put an OR in between those. Okay, let's try one last one. So again, the absolute value is isolated. So we're going to split it into two, two equations. The first one looks the same without the bars. The second one, you flip the inequality and you change it to a negative. So I know I'm dealing with negative 7 and 7. Now see how the, the inequality is facing away from the absolute value? That means that this is going to work the same way as our, our first graph, okay, where it was like a barbell shape. So I put my endpoints on negative 7 and 7. The inequalities say that they can be equal to, so I'm going to fill in those endpoints. We shade them. And then the numbers where x is less than 7 come this way. And where they're greater than negative 7 also goes this way. So this is the graph that it's produced. We can also write this as an inequality saying negative 7 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7. Okay. If I wanted to write it in interval notation, I would use square brackets because it's shaded in. And I'd write it like an ordered pair. Okay. And that's that. That is absolute value inequalities. Until next time.